Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program with Reinstein. This episode, I want to do a manned landing on Duna so I can plant a flag and complete that um, mission. Now, this is the rocket that I'm going to take. I call it the Duna Man Rocket, just for ease of uh, finding it in my large collection of rockets. Let me just show you how big this thing is. Blah, 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 loads of them. So, you can see the cost here, 165386 Let me just talk you through the rocket. We've got the lander can here. We've got four parachutes around the side. Uh, we've got a docking port on the top. Now, the docking port on the top is important because, basically, what I want to do is land approximately this section and then launch that back into Duna orbit, which requires... I don't think it requires too much. I can't remember the exact figures, but 3,148 delta V should be enough as the atmosphere and gravity on Duna are slightly less than um, Kerbin. So we can get away with less than what we're going to need to get into orbit around Kerbin. Now, obviously, we've got a ladder here. We can extend that. Uh, we've got some RCS thrusters, hence the RCS fuel tank up here. Uh, that's so that we can dock this rocket. We're, basically, we're going to have another rocket that goes into orbit around Duna. And then we're going to rendezvous this one with that rocket around Duna and bring the Kerbal back safely. Now, that is all there is to it, really. We've got to make sure we've got enough uh, electricity on there. So we've got um, our solar panels. We've got a large battery there. And that's pretty much it. Um, I've got some fins further down to stabilize it, but you can see on the left here, under Kerbal Engineer Redux, uh, the mod that I'm using, you can see the thrust to weight ratios. Now, ideally, you want over 1.4 to escape Kerbin, so I'm all right here. I've got 1.6. My overall delta V, 10,448, is quite sizable and should be enough to get me to Duna and uh, back up into orbit of Duna. So I will see you in a few when we'll be rendezvousing with Duna. So this was a first for me. Here I am coming in to approach Duna. Now, yeah, like I say, this was a first for me. I've never ever done a manned landing on Duna and certainly nothing this complex where I'm landing, then I'm gonna take off again and uh, run, rendezvous with some, with another ship in orbit and then return it to Kerbin. Never ever done anything like this. So you may see a number of bugs. Um, as usual, I have pre-recorded this and I'm talking over it after the fact. Now you can see, all I'm trying to do here is try to um, get to a, a sort of a good landing spot, maneuver myself into a position where I can land. At this stage in my career, I didn't know you could um, land on Duna without a uh, without a heat shield. So this rocket does have a heat shield. I now know from forums and various other videos that you don't need a heat shield. So here I am. I'm just trying to get my orbit sort of as low as possible. I wasn't even quite sure at what level the atmosphere would start hitting me and slowing me down. So I'm gradually... Now I'm ready with the heat shield facing towards the atmosphere that I'm going to be entering uh, with what I thought was enough uh, enough uh, ablator to stop any heat affecting my rocket. Like I said, you don't need it. The atmosphere on Duna is very thin and um, it's just not necessary. But you can see I'm now about 22,000 meters above and very soon I should hit the point where I will be... Um, going through the atmosphere. It's quite low. I didn't realize how low the atmosphere was. So here it is, about 21,000 meters up. Um, so I'm starting to experience some heating on my rocket. Just making sure I'm keeping it all in good nick. Get some data there from old Maxi Kermin, who's been chosen for this mission. Jebediah is elsewhere in the universe. I'm also getting some more, uh, more science, like gravity and temperature. And down we go, down we go. I need the speed to drop. If you take a look on the left, my parachutes are um, not able to open yet without breaking. So, uh, yeah, I was slightly scared at this point. So I thought, okay, well, we're coming into land really quite sharp and very, very soon. So I thought I'm going to blow up if I'm not careful here. I better, 
I better use some Delta V to slow myself down. So I did slow myself down enough and got the parachutes open. Didn't even know how many parachutes I needed, to be honest. And it turns out this wasn't enough, I don't think. Um, so here I'm just seeing if there's any data I can get. Nothing yet. And now it's just a case of free falling. But if you try and land at 16.5 meters per second, you will definitely blow up. <laughs> um, the game tends to have tolerances up to about 6 meters per second. I don't know how accurate that is in real life. But uh, you can generally get away with landing on places with 6 meters per second. So um, I decided to use a little bit more Delta V to slow myself down. But I want to get as low as I can before I start wasting any Delta V. Because I still wasn't sure how much Delta V was required to get me back in orbit. So at this stage it was looking quite perilous. Maxi's like, am I going to be able to come home? And I'm like, uh, not sure. But... Uh, I tried to conserve as much Delta V as I could, hence why I left it so close to the ground before burning. But you can see the relative weakness of gravity here. My thrust to weight ratio on the right, if you have a look, under vessel, it says 0.88, which is really quite low. And it's slowing me enough down to get a touchdown on the surface at quite a nice speed, about 2 meters per second. So we've landed, and I'm like, wow, I've never done this before. Let's gather as much science as we can. And the science that I do get, I don't even need to beam it back. I can uh, carry it back up and to the rendezvous craft, which could have more batteries. Or I could just bring it all back down to Kerbin. But it turns out, I was like, yeah, let's, let's just beam some of it back. I've got enough battery power here. I've got solar panels generating extra power. We might as well get the most out of this. Because like I said, at this point, I wasn't even sure I'd be able to get Maxi back into orbit. Um... Yeah, that's just one of those things. So I was like, well, we're here. Why not get out on the surface? So I extend my ladder. Look how cool that is. I love all these little systems on the game uh, you can, where you can place ladders on it and then crawl down. And So I've managed to get some more data, beam that back. That's another 40 science, um, which is loads, uh, even though I need, tend to need about 500 more science for each unlock now. I've, I'm quite high up in the research tree. Oh, there we go. The ladder doesn't even extend to the ground, so she's going to have to jump for it. Way! <laughs> Thankfully, it's a tiny little jump. That's probably 10 feet in real life, maybe. I don't know, but there we are, spinning her around so I can get a good look at her little face. She looks so happy. Still, she's unsure as I am. Can we get her back? I don't know. Time to plant a flag anyway. Man landing on Duna, and the contract is complete. Look at that. If I recover that, that's 240 science from... Uh, a soil sample. So do another EVA reporter on Duna's lowlands. That's another bunch of science. So we go back up to our rocket if we can get there. Oh, thankfully the uh, little rocket thrusters propel her high enough to grab onto the ladder. <laughs> Time to get back into our lander can. Not really a lander can, is it? It's more like a more like a module. Um, yeah. Anyway, off we go. Back up into space. This is the bit where I'm unsure. Can I get to orbit? Don't, I don't know what the most efficient way is of getting back into orbit, but gravity seems to be relatively weak here, at least compared to what we're used to on Kerbin. So I just follow the same rules that I did while I'm on Kerbin. Start tilting right. Nine, uh, although we're at going at 180 degrees, if I'd have uh, been a bit more experienced, I would have probably gone at the 90 degree. Uh, it's just going to make... The reason I wanted, would have wanted to go for the 90 degree is so we can get a sort of uh, a nice orbit, an equatorial orbit, rather than a polar orbit. Although the polar orbit does have its advantages, you can get science from around the poles. Um, I may even do another career mode, you know, where I get much more efficient at um, researching. Not quite sure. But anyway, I get to a nice... I tried to burn enough to get to a nice apoapsis. Um well out of the range of uh, the planet pulling me back down so I'm just thrusting up but you can see um, as I let you know I'm, I'm beaming up to speed right now but when I let go of the thruster uh, the apoapsis continuously changes so gravity is still exerting quite a strong force on me um, but what I do is just set a maneuver point at the apoapsis in order to form a circular orbit. At this stage, I didn't really have much experience. I'm like, it's uh, still sucking me back down and the apoapsis is going to continually change. So if I set a maneuver, it's going to be obsolete by the time I get there. So I'm kind of fast forwarding a little bit. I'm trying to get 
to this apoapsis. And there we go. I figure that's good enough. As long as we can get into some sort of circular orbit, then I'm pretty I'm pretty good at docking. So I should be able to rendezvous with it and bring her back. And that's all we need to do. Do a little burn at the apoapsis. Get into an orbit. Go around the poles. Like I said, lots of nice science there. And uh, yeah, in the second part of this Duna landing and rescue mission, I will be rendezvousing with the craft around Duna and returning Maxi to Kerbin, which I hopefully you will join me for. So let's just finish up this episode. Burning now to complete my orbit and we can leave her there. She's not going to get sucked down into Duna's gravity well anymore. She's safe up there. Thank you for watching, guys.